Greetings, everyone. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the Equip School of Ministry Bible class. So grateful for all of you who have tuned in tonight. Want to give everybody a chance and some time to, to log on. Excited about uh, the word um, that the Lord is going to share with us this evening. And so excited for all of you who have tuned in. I hope that you have had a wonderful, fantastic, tremendous day um, and that you can testify with me that God is good. He's worthy of all the praise and uh, he certainly is deserving. Amen. And so again, grateful for all of you. As you know, I'm Pastor Kay, the Saturation Ministries Global. I'm the Equip School of Ministry and I'm uh, looking forward to sharing with you tonight. So make sure you get your Bibles, get your Bibles, get your notebook. And uh, we're going to take some notes tonight and delve into, into the word of the Lord. Um, before we go any further, I do want to express uh, my sincere thanks and appreciation for everyone, for everyone who shared uh, in the celebration of my first pastoral anniversary this past weekend. I had such a wonderful, wonderful, blessed time and so grateful for um, the SMG leadership staff. Um, they put together a wonderful celebration surprise me even on some things. I'm just grateful that God has um, given me the uh, esteemed honor and privilege to serve in this capacity as pastor of Saturation Ministries Global um, to launch this great work here in the city of Houston. Again, so grateful for um, the SMG family and grateful to all of you who continue to tune in uh, week after week and show your uh, support to us. So again, I'm so grateful, so grateful and thankful um, for what the Lord is doing in the midst of us and what the Lord is doing in Saturation Ministries Global. Again, it's my honor to serve as pastor. And I'm just grateful that God has blessed me uh, with wonderful people around me uh, to, to move us forward in accomplishing the mission and the vision of Saturation Ministries Global. So um, our overseer blessed us on Sunday. Um, our overseer, Bishop C. Sean Tyson, who is in Youngstown, Ohio from our home church. He preached a dynamic message. What did I say? So I'm so grateful that he put us in remembrance of what the Lord has shared with us. And I just believe that in this year of possession, that we're going to possess the promises of God. It's going to be just like God said. What did he tell you? What did God say to you? And I trust and believe that you are yet standing on the promises of God. His word cannot fail because he cannot lie. So, so grateful that he reminded us what did I say? It's going to be just like God said. So, so grateful for Bishop Tyson um, and his oversight and guidance as we continue the work here um, in Houston. So grateful for his beautiful wife, Pastor Krista Tyson as well. And all my Calvary family, thank you so much uh, for your prayers and for your support. So we're going to get into the word um, tonight. So grateful again that you've joined in. And I'm um, happy uh, St. Patrick's Day. Um, I don't celebrate the holiday, but I'm wearing green because um, our beautiful angel, uh, my niece, Kiana Moses Hooker, who has transitioned to be with the Lord, uh, she would dress up on St. Patrick's Day, especially. She would dress up on all the, all the holidays, but especially on St. Patrick's Day. So um, our family, we're just wearing green today um, in honor of her and we miss her, but we know that she is watching over us and so grateful, so grateful for all of the wonderful memories. So this is for you, my love. This is for you. <laughs> so let's get into the word. Um, I want you to turn to the book of First John. We are still in our Back to the Basics series. Um, we've been dealing with the person of God, the person of God, dealing with his essence. So before we start reading, of course, we're going to pray. I want to make sure that you have your Bibles. Please get your notebooks. Uh, we're not going to be long tonight. We're trying to maintain that 30-minute window. Uh, so, so we're going to get in as much as we can. And again, we're taking our time in this series, Back to the Basics. We're not going to rush through it. So we're going to continue each week and sharing what the Lord has put in our hearts to share because we need to get back to basics. Sometimes with life and life circumstances, we can drift from foundational truths, but it's good to just remind ourselves of who our God really is. So, so Father, in the name of Jesus, we honor you and we bless you. We give you all the glory and the honor. You are indeed worthy. We esteem you high. You are above all things, God. And so we bless your name. We reverence you. We exalt you. We're so grateful 
that you have given us the privilege to be in relationship with you. We never want to take that for granted that you have chosen us out of the millions of people you could have chosen to say thank you that you chose to save me. Thank you that you chose to save us. And we invite your presence tonight. We ask in the name of Jesus that you would bless us in our study, bless the conversation, the discussion, bless us as we delve into your word and allow your word to accomplish its purpose in us and for us. And Father, we always pray that the people will be edified, but most of all, you will be glorified in Jesus' name that your anointing rest upon me even now. Bless those who are listening. Bless their ears to hear, their hearts to receive. Do something miraculous tonight, God. In the name of Jesus, have your divine way. Let your will be accomplished in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Again, we are in the Back to the Basic series. Please turn to the book of First John uh, chapter 1. We're going to go there initially. But just as a reminder, we are dealing with um, the essence of God, the person of God, um, from the standpoint of the trilogy that God is spirit, which is found in John 4, 24, that God is love, which is found in 1 John chapter 4, verses 8 and 16. And then tonight, tonight we're going to deal with God is light. God is light. So again, we're going to turn to um, 1 John chapter 1. And last week, we were talking about uh, God is love. And we discussed the love of God in four areas. Um, number one, God in essence, God in demonstration, God in power, and God in privilege. So last week, we addressed three of those four areas, and I wanted to just share that fourth one to just close out that portion of, of the teaching. Um, God is love, in essence, demonstration, power, and tonight, privilege before we go into God is light. So just for a brief recap from last week, God's love in essence, when the Bible says that God is love, his isness, his isness cannot be altered by anything or anyone. He is eternal. Therefore, his essence, his characteristics, his attributes are eternal as well. So when we say that the love of God is the essence of God, his love cannot change. His love cannot be altered. Number two, his love and demonstration. The greatest demonstration of the love of God, of course, um, that agape, unconditional love, is the expression of, of his love in Jesus the Christ. Uh, Jesus is love in demonstration. Jesus is love in perfection. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So in demonstration, Jesus is the, the Christ, is the greatest demonstration of God's love. God's love in power. His love makes us alive. It is an empowering force. The Bible says his love, it quickens us. It, it, it transforms us. So his love uh, is poured into our hearts, transforms our hearts, causes us to be new creatures in him. And his love repositions. It repositions us to a place of dominion. You have power because of the love of God. And we didn't cover last week, so we're just going to hit this briefly this week. Um, the essence of God, his love in privilege. As recipients of his love, we, thank God, we are afforded the profound privilege of relationship. Now that should excite you tonight. Because of the love of God, we are um, afforded the profound privilege of relationship with God. His love grants us the privilege to be born again. His love grants us the privilege to abide and remain in him. His love grants us the privilege of remaining connected with him. Listen, we are the beloved of God. How amazing. How amazing is that? I want you to put that in the comments. I am the beloved of God. I am the beloved of God. And the fact that his love is not based on us, it's just simply placed on us, 
by his own volition and his own will. I think somebody ought to shout hallelujah because it's not based upon what we do, how deserving or undeserving we are. His love is not based on us. His love is simply placed on us. Hallelujah. All right. So we're going to get into now. Um, God is light. We're going to move quickly into the last area uh, in this trilogy that deals with the fact that God is light. Discussing the person of God. God is light. So here we go. Let's turn to 1 John chapter 1. And we're going to read um, verse 5. Um, that's what's going to come up on your screen, but actually, and I apologize to my staff because I do this to this all, to them all the time. I actually want to start with verse one. I'm um, John chapter one, verse one. I want you to make sure you read it in your Bibles, get your Bibles. And we, we can't be lazy y'all. So get your Bible and we're going to read it in the scripture. First John chapter one, verse one, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life. I wanna start here because I want us to get the understanding and the reason why John is speaking this way to the people. So he is proficient and effective in going back to the beginning and going back to the beginning. So he says, which was from the beginning, we've seen him, we've looked upon him, our hands have handled him, verse two, for the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the father and was manifested unto us. Mm. What is so profound about this pericope of scripture is that John is actually allowing the Bible to preach for itself. I want you all to make sure you understand that the Bible preaches all by itself. I know we have preachers and pastors and leaders and orators and speakers, but the Bible preaches all by itself. Uh, and so he's starting off by referencing the beginning, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, that which was prophesied and spoken in the beginning in scripture is now what we have seen. We have seen him, we have heard him, we have handled him. Notice it's a him. <laughs> we have handled him. So, so, so John is laying the foundation for the deity of Jesus the Christ. The deity of Jesus the Christ. The validity, the credibility of Jesus the Christ. The authority of Jesus the Christ. So listen, he says, that which we have seen and heard Verse three, declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the father and with his son, Jesus Christ. And we're writing this unto you that your joy may be full. What is he saying? At this time, um, uh, John is dealing with people who just believe that Jesus the Christ was, was just a prophet. Um, uh, he was dealing with people, listen, that believed that uh, just because they knew the scriptures, that they could live any kind of way they chose to live as long as they knew the scripture or believe they knew scripture. Um, they were called the Gnostics, and we, we can get into that at a later time. Uh, but they were dealing with um, these people who just simply believed that Jesus was just any other ordinary man. Uh, John says, oh, no, sir, no, ma'am, no. Uh, this Jesus was in the beginning. This Jesus is who was prophesied about. This Jesus has now been made manifest. We have seen him. We've heard him. We've handled, we've touched him. So John wants to make it very clear, lay the foundation of the deity of Jesus, the deity of Jesus. So, so just real quickly, just real quickly, uh, I want you, we're going to come back to this. I want you to turn to the gospel of John, the gospel of John. So turn back in your Bible to the gospel of John. We're going to go to chapter one in the gospel of John. And let's look at how he yet emphasizes the deity of Jesus, the deity of Jesus, the gospel of John chapter one. Let's start with verse one. We're going to get verse one. And then we're going to drop down to verse 14. 
So just read this very quickly. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. I need you to understand in the beginning, what, what John is referencing when he said in the beginning, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Now drop down to verse 14. Here it is. And the word that he's talking about that was in the beginning and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. So he was in the beginning. The word was in the beginning. The word was with God. The word was God. The word was God. And then we see that the word became flesh. That is the same thing that John is saying in 1 John, in the beginning. He's referencing the fact that Jesus and God are one, are one. He is making sure that we understand the godness of Jesus. So let's turn real quickly to, to John. Let's go over to John verse eight. I'm sorry, John chapter eight. We're going to look at John chapter eight, verse 58. Again, the deity of Jesus. John 8, 58. Jesus said unto them, verily I verily, verily, verily I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. <laughs> the, the, the people are questioning him. They say, listen, listen, I know you're saying all of this, that you think you know this, you think you know who God is, you think you know scripture. But listen, before Abraham was, I am. He's speaking of the fact that he was in the beginning with God. Uh, he was in the beginning with God because he is God. <laughs> Come on, let's turn over again. Let's now go to chapter 10. Keep on turning. Go to chapter 10. Let's go to verse 30. This sums it all up. Verse 30, chap John chapter 10, verse 30. I and my father are what? I and my father are one. So for those who would just believe uh, that, that Jesus was just a prophet, an ordinary man, when the scripture is preaching to you and the scripture is teaching to you, it is sharing with you know, that Jesus was in the beginning, that Jesus and God are the same. <laughs> Jesus is God. And so John is one of the most prolific biblical writers in terms of presenting that Jesus is more than a prophet. He is prolific and profound in all of his writings in the Gospel of John, in 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, dealing with the fact that Jesus is deity. Jesus is God. So that he laid that foundation. I just need you to understand that, that he's dealing with the people much like we are today who don't see Jesus in his true um, essence, his true identity and deity of God as God. But the scripture says so, amen. In the beginning was the word, the word became flesh. We beheld him full of his glory, amen. So now let's get back to uh, first John, let's go back. Let's go back, he has laid the foundation. So after John establishes and reminds the people of the deity, the godness of Jesus, listen, he then says, let's go, verse five. This then, 1 John chapter one, verse five, this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Come on here, God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Again, we want to, to, to just express to you the reason why John feels the need to share this with the people. He wants you to understand and emphasize the fact that God is light. And because he wants to make a point about fellowship, fellowship, the privilege we have of being in fellowship with God, he emphasizes the fact that God is light. Why? He says that God is light and that there is no darkness in him at all, meaning we cannot be in fellowship with God if we're not intentional about walking and living in the light. I need you to hear me tonight. 
You cannot be in fellowship. John is emphasizing the privilege of fellowship, but he has to make the point. God is light uh, and in him is no darkness at all. So if we're going to say that we're saved, amen, if we're going to say uh, that we are in God, uh, uh, then, then we also have to say and be intentional that we must walk in the light. Mm. You, you, you can't live any kind of way claiming to be saved. No, uh, the Bible tells us that there is a worthy walk. There is a walk that we have to make worthy, walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. You have to walk right. Come on. Write in the comments, I will walk worthy. <laughs> I will walk worthy. So he said, no, no, no. This is the fact that God is light and in him is no darkness at all, which means that if you choose to live in darkness, then you are not, you are not walking with God and you cannot be in God because there is no darkness at all in him. Because God is light, he can have no fellowship. Listen, he can have no fellowship with darkness. Uh, the book of 2 Corinthians 6, 14 says, what fellowship can light have with darkness? So he's making the point. If you say you're saved, shout out saved, amen. If you say you're saved, then you have to walk in the light because God is light and in him is no darkness at all. So in order for us to have fellowship, we have to be intentional to walk in the light. So let's look at the attribute. Um, God's attribute as light, um, his essence of light. The Greek word for light there, when it says that God is light in verse five, the Greek word for light is the word false. False. It simply means all knowledge manifests to make evident, to expose or to reveal. False. Therefore, when he speaks of God is light, God is the source, listen, of all knowledge, all that is truth. God is the source. God is the source and measure of all that is true. God is the one who makes manifest. God is the one that, th that brings things into light. God is the one that exposes and reveals. Listen, please, I need you to get this. God is the reason, the mind of all understanding. God is the reason, he is the mind of all understanding. Remember in the gospel of John, we read it just tonight. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. That word, word, that's the logos in Greek, logos. And that simply means mind, concept, thought, or thinker of the thought, as my bishop would say back home, idea. It means mind, concept, thought, idea, logos. So in the beginning was the logos. In the beginning was the thought. <laughs> And the thought was with God. And the thought was God. In the beginning was the concept. Huh? And the concept was with God. And the concept was God. You get it? So it's the logos, which means then it is the cause, creator, and the organization of all life. Listen here. I want you to shout with me that God is amazing. <laughs> not, not amazing. He is awe amazing we, we stand in awe of who he is his person his essence so when we say that god is light it means that he is the mind he is the thinker of the thought mm, that produces listen he is he is the mind that holds all of his creation all together he is the, the mind behind the creation uh, he is the one that holds it together. He is the one that organizes everything and keeps it held up by the word of his power. That's, it. that's, that's awesome. He is the mind behind it. He is the concept. He is the thought. He is the thinker of the thought. He is the idea. 
So when John says that God is light, he is saying that God is moral purity. Light is the purest form. Listen, God is moral purity. He's not mixed with any type of embellishment at all. There is no darkness at all in him. There is no mixture. He is purity, perfect purity. When John says that God is light, he says it means he is the consummate majesty. <laughs> he is above all. He is majestic in all of his ways. Uh, he is absolutely complete, total package, needs nothing added, nothing can be taken away. He is the consummate majesty. He is light. He is eternal perfection. When he says God is light, God is eternal perfection. Meaning he, he's not going to mess up, y'all. He doesn't have the capacity to. He's eternally perfect. Uh, and he is divine goodness. He is moral purity. He is consummate majesty. He is eternal perfection. He is divine goodness. Uh, God as light is perfect in his brilliance. Now, when I say brilliance, I'm not speaking of um, how brightly he shines. No, um, I I'm speaking of his intelligence, his capacity, his ability, his creativity as the creator. God as light is perfect in his brilliance. He is perfect in his knowledge. He is perfect in his wisdom. He is perfectly brilliant. Uh, come on, he is light. So, so let's consider, let's consider tonight um, just looking at light in humanistic terms uh, and, and then relate them spiritually. We'll just look uh, and, and we'll make it real simple tonight. Um, light in humanistic terms. Light is constant and indestructible. You cannot destroy light. It's, it's constant and indestructible. Light can never be destroyed. You cannot destroy it. Well, God is eternal. He's immaterial. He's spirit. He can never be defeated or destroyed. Who come on here. And I just hear that song in my spirit. And because God is the greatest power, we shall never never be defeated. God cannot be defeated. He cannot be destroyed. Light is constant and indestructible. God is constant and indestructible. Light is everywhere in the atmosphere. Everywhere you look, there's light, even in the darkness. Uh, light is everywhere in the atmosphere. God is omnipresent. He's everywhere, everywhere, in everything. He's in past, present, and future. He feels time. Mm, he's everywhere. Uh, light is everywhere. God is everywhere, even in darkness. Even in darkness. Come on. I need you. I, I preached a message one time that was entitled, I'm not afraid of the dark. <laughs> Tell somebody, I'm not afraid of the dark. Uh, because God is light. And no matter how dark your circumstances can become, hear me, you serve the God that is the God of light. And as long as you are in him, you will always have light. <laughs> you will always have light around you, even in your darkness. Uh, come on here, come on here. All right, so light. Light, we're looking at it humanistically and in the spiritual. Light illuminates. Light illuminates. God is the illumination and the brilliance of all truth. All truth proceeds from who he is. He is the one that gives light and illuminates everything. Listen, he is the creator. He called the world out of darkness. His first words were, let there be light. Amen. So he calls things out of darkness. He illuminates and reveals. Uh, he's called us out of darkness into what? 
his marvelous light. So light illuminates. God is the illumination. He is the truth. He brings light. He sheds light. He brings wisdom. He brings understanding. He brings guidance. God is light. He illuminates. And I want you to make this note. I know it's close to um, our time to close for the night. It just seems like we just get started, just get started. Uh, but I, I know that I want to let you go uh, in good time. But I want you to make this note. Please hear me. Darkness, write this down. Darkness cannot lessen the brilliance of light. Darkness can only lessen the sight of the brilliance of light. Please, please get this tonight, people. Ooh, saints and friends, get this tonight. Darkness cannot lessen the brilliance of light. Darkness can only lessen the sight of the brilliance of light. Light cannot be destroyed. So darkness does not lessen the brilliance of light. It just means you can't see it. Darkness in the physical realm is simply the absence of light. Darkness can't even be measured. Light can be measured. Darkness can't even be measured. It's just the absence of light. However, the absence of light does not disannul what is already there. You just can't see it. <laughs> Come on here. Just because if, if I made this room dark, you would not be able to see me. But I'm still here. Just because there's darkness does not mean that what God placed there is not there. You just can't see it. That's why John is saying you've got to walk in the light. Walk in the light so that you can see. So that you can see God is light and he will illuminate light to you as you've never seen it before when you make the decision to walk in the light. You have to walk in the light. This is why Paul is admonishing the people. And I'm admonishing us tonight to walk in the light so that we can see the glory of God. So that we can see what he has promised us. So that we can see the privileges of fellowship with him. Uh, I know it's getting late. I know it's getting late. And so, and so <laughs> I, I just want to, I want to get to as much as I can. Let me just get to this last point. Let me just get to this, this, this last point. We'll end, we'll end on this. I'm just looking again at light in humanistic terms, light in the physical, and then light in the spiritual. Light is constant and transcends time and space. Light is constant and transcends time and space. Light is everywhere. It's, it's in the heavenlies. It's, 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 it, where you go, when we go to the moon, light is everywhere. It transcends time and space. God is constant. He can consume all time and space, but never be bound by time and space. And listen, as the creator, he is always transcendent or above his creation. Mm. So, so, so he's not, he's not, uh, he can never be minimized. He can never be contained. Uh, he's, he's transcendent. So he transcends time and space. This is the kind of God that we serve. And this is why it is so important for us to get back to basics because sometimes we can forget who our God really is, how awesome he really is, because sometimes life and living uh, can cause us to drift. And then we, we put God into a box because we, well, he's our way maker, but then that's all we know him as. No, God is bigger than just a way maker. Come on here. God transcends time. God is bigger than a way maker. Um, God is bigger than just your way out and way in. He's God. He's light. He's brilliance, he's mind, he's concept, he's idea, he's thought, he's wisdom. This is what it means when we say that God, when the Bible says that God is light. And listen, when we are walking in the light, the beautiful, beautiful light, come on here. 
then we have the privilege of seeing, visualizing, handling, hearing this great God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so I want to encourage you. We're going to end tonight. I hope that you've taken some notes. We're going to end, but we're going to continue. There are still some more that I want to share with you with regard to God is light. We haven't even gotten to a number of the scriptures that we're going to go into, um, but just remember this, God is light. There is no darkness in him at all. Um, there's a scripture in Timothy that we'll discuss next, next week uh, with regard to the fact that he's unapproachable. There's no way that we can approach God because we were darkness. Ah, oh, but he made a way. He made a way for us to get in Jesus the Christ so that we can approach the light. Come on here. And not only approach the light, we are exposed to the light and the light then changes who we are. <laughs> Come on, y'all. I'm so excited about the fact that we serve the true and living God. Mm, we go, there's a scripture. He is the true light. Come on, he is the true light. And so I want you to be encouraged tonight that God is light. So if there is something you need to know, that there is something you need an answer to, go to God in prayer. He can cast and shine the light and give you the wisdom and the understanding of your circumstance. And when he doesn't give you the wisdom and the understanding because he is the light, he will then direct you and help you navigate Ooh, come on here. He will help you navigate through life so that you can be victorious because he's already promised you the victory. The Bible says he's already given us the victory and he has caused us to triumph. So I, I want to pray with you before we go. I want to pray with you so that, again, we will be intentional. Please be intentional about our privilege to have fellowship with the light. Mm. We are called now the children of light. So let's walk in the light. Um, and if there's anybody who's listening to this broadcast and you have not yet made the decision to come on, come on, come on out of darkness into the marvelous light of God, you can do that tonight. It's just opening up your mouth and making the confession. Come on here. Just say it with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I, I confess my faults, my flaws, my sins, and I invite you into my heart so that you would be my Lord and my Savior. And I pray that you would cleanse me of all of my sins in the name of Jesus. I want to walk in the light, the beautiful light. I want to walk where there is glory. I want to see you. So Father, in Jesus' name, cleanse me even now. I confess and I want to walk upright. Empower me to do so. Come into my heart, change me. Let the love of God change my heart so that I can now walk in the light of God and walk in new life. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. If that's you, please type in the comments, saved, some kind of way, type it in the comments. We wanna get in touch with you because we want to make sure and help you. We wanna make sure that you receive everything that God has for you. And we wanna help you on the, along your journey with God. And for those of us, you know, we say, amen, let's make sure that we are walking in the light. Let's make sure that we have a worthy walk. Amen. It's our privilege and our honor. And so there's just one more thing that I want to do tonight. And that is, of course, we want to always give um, to just tell God, thank you. So we want you uh, to just get an offering tonight. Just sow a seed. We, we were talking in the, on Sunday. Um, um, our, our theme for this month is spring forth. So we want everybody to plant. You got to have something in the ground and this is good ground y'all. So plant something with the expectation that God is going to cause it to spring forth. And he's going to give you 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold. Come on. According to your faith, we're going to plant tonight. So let's tell God, thank you. Um, our SMG family, of course, we want to give in our offering. That might be $10, $20, whatever the Lord leads you to give, just be obedient. And then grace will abound. And here um, at SMG, of course, we have our declaration of faith that we always repeat, recite, put it in the atmosphere um, when we are given, giving. So I want that to come up on your screen because I want you to say it with me out loud. Put it in your house. Let it. <laughs> we want the Lord to know that we believe um, and we believe and we are planting a seed in faith. So our declaration of faith, get your offering in your hand or if you type it on your phone, you know, you can text to give, go on our website. 
whatever means that you choose to use, but make this declaration with me. Father, you said in 2 Corinthians 9, 7, 8, that you love a cheerful giver and that you're able to bless me abundantly so that in all things at all times, I will have all that I need and abound in every good work. Therefore, I give my tithes and offerings cheerfully and in faith. Because of my obedience, I decree that I will experience no lack in any area of my life. I decree that I have creative power to gain wealth and will exercise wisdom and discipline as a wise steward. I decree that I am blessed, I am prosperous, and I am in good health as I move toward and maintain financial freedom. I want you to say this out loud, y'all. I declare it is so. Shout it is so in the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord. Again, you can give, you can text to give. Um, the ways to give will come up on your screen. Um, we want you to plant that seed with the expectation uh, that God's going to cause it to spring forth. We're already blessed, y'all. And, and so we just want to tell God thank you. Uh, in anticipation of what he's going to do. Anybody believe in God for anything? Hallelujah. I, I just, I want you to type in the comments, I believe God. And here at SMG, we, we have the saying, I believe God over everything. I know the circumstances may not be what I want them to be. The conditions may not be the way I want them to be, but I still believe God over everything. Amen. So Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for those who have sown tonight, who have believed to see the goodness of the Lord. And I pray in the name of Jesus that your blessings would rest upon them, rest upon their home, rest upon their children. In the name of Jesus, you said that you would supply our every need. So Father, we trust you because we know that your word will not return unto your void. So thank you for being our supply. Thank you for being what we need. Thank you for providing for us. And we give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much tonight. I pray that you have been blessed by the Bible class. Again, we will continue. Read over those notes. Read over the scriptures. Rehearse them in, the, in your spirit this week. And then make sure, listen, make sure you join us tomorrow at noon. Again, we have introduced and launched our Equip School of Ministry, Noonday Edition, Noonday Edition. So our ministerial staff, um, they are teaching uh, with regard to the attributes of God. So it has been exciting, profound preaching coming forth. And so we want to make sure that you tune in tomorrow, every Thursday at 12 noon, our Equip School of Ministry, Noonday Edition. And then we'll see you on Sunday. The Lord has a word for us Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Looking forward to you joining us. Again, we thank God for you, your support, your love, and we want you to have a wonderful evening. Love and blessings, everybody.